Hi, I'm Peter Burns. I'm standing on the spot where about 30 years ago stood Tuncarry Foster Aero Club, one of the nicest clubs that you're likely to come across. The Super 8 film that I shot as far as I can remember goes back to about 1978 and shows a lot of the activities that went on here at the club. It's a well-known fact that uh, the club contributed a lot to the economy of the town back in those days because as I remember there were always a lot of aircraft flying in every weekend and they'd go out and spend their money and they'd have a good time here. Very friendly, very social club. A little bit later I'll tell you what happened to the club and why the club closed down. But right now let's have a look at some of that film shot back in 1978. The first thing that visitors saw when they came into the airfield was the windsock and the prevailing winds were most of the time westerly or northeasterly which meant that there was always a crosswind but sometimes like it shows here it was calm. This is a weekend where there was a fly-in and quite a lot of aircraft flew in from all over Australia that weekend. It was always a big job to control the large amount of air traffic that came in on the fly-in weekends and the air show weekends, but the guys did it. One of the most important jobs that can be done on a fly-in weekend is the duty of the bar manager and there he is doing a terrific job. There's yours truly saying hi and what? There's that bar manager again. Miss, are you having a good time here this afternoon? Oh, Peter! On one of the air show weekends, there was a Tiger Moth setting up on final approach to do a flower bombing of a trailer that was set up on the runway. And I remember this because I was uh, assisting Bob Berryman, who was club president at the time, to set the trailer up. 
we were walking away from the trailer, heading back over to the clubhouse area and heard this loud bang. We turned around, it was the tiger moth flying right into the ground. He got the trailer okay, uh, the ambulance was brought in and the pilot was taken away and I do believe that the pilot survived. I haven't heard anything after that. To this day I don't know his condition. I'm just cutting in some present day footage now for you to have a look at. The clubhouse was just to the left of that large tree there and as we move to the left further the caribou uh, in the scene coming up sitting round about where that mound of dirt is and then as we go further around to the left we have what is now the TAFE and what used to be the hangar. This all actually was here 32 years ago. It's hard to believe. One bright Saturday afternoon we were all excited to hear from the RAAF. One of their caribou aircraft wanted to come into Tuncurry and do some short field uh, training. Tuncurry was only about 3,000 feet long. This made it ideal for that sort of training. The guys in the RAAF, in the Caribou, were very generous. They allowed everybody to have a look at the aircraft and go through. They allowed some of us to sit in the command seat. Here's Helen Roots waving out the window. I got to sit in that seat as well, I must say, and uh, it was a good feeling. There's some names you may remember. Up on the patio of the club is Wal Hodgkinson. He had the Lake Buccaneer, he used to do joy flights from the beach at Boatland and he had the kiosk called Beach Buns up on the main beach for a little while with his wife Denise. And there's the club president at the time, Bob Berryman. Yeah. 
Well, there you have it. Over 34 years ago, Foster Tun Curry did have its own airport with a commercial flying operator, an aero club and a flying school. I was a student at that flying school and I obtained my private pilot's license while I was still at school. So many others did too, seen in this movie. The club had its own aircraft, firstly a Cessna 172 Sierra Charlie Alpha and then a Piper Warrior. Sierra Echo Whiskey. The club was built and run on the generous time and financial support of its members and was responsible for bringing tens of thousands of dollars into the town. Around 1979 or 1980 another commercial operator obtained a license to operate a regular public transport commuter service from the Wallace Island airstrip down to Sydney. Now since Tun Curry is only 2.5 nautical miles away, the then CAA, now CASA, invoked the 5 nautical mile proximity regulation and it closed flying operations at Tun Curry. The club did continue flying from Wallace Island for a little while and then moved to Taree, but the club eventually folded. The clubhouse and airstrip quickly went into disrepair. The airstrip has been used uh, by the Tun Curry Golf Club as their access road for the last 20, 25 years or so, but its maintenance has quite disgracefully been neglected and it is currently in very bad disrepair. Oh, by the way, the commercial operation on Wallace Island that caused it all folded not long after it opened. And since then, there has been at least one fatal aircraft accident on the island as emergency services could not respond quick enough and so Wallace Island is rarely used anymore.